Hey everybody, it's Joe, and have you noticed, if you're shopping for 3D printers, that their price goes on a strange kind of curve? Let's talk about that a little bit while I unbox the LK4 Pro from my friends at Longer 3D Printers. Hey everybody, really quickly, I've got a couple of things I need to jump in here and tell you about. First of all, the Christmas tree for the Children's Hospital is up and raising money and a big thanks to Maker Myers and others who helped me get that set up and up there. I'm super excited to be in the Festival of Trees. The tree looks marvelous and I think you all did a great job producing the ornaments for that. Second thing, now that I've got my P.O. box but I'm no longer receiving ornaments for this year, I've got stickers. So if you guys would like to get some 3D printing professor stickers, all you need to do is send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address that I'll put up right there. And you guys can get that taken care of. And then, uh, yeah, I will send you guys whatever stickers you want. I've got two different designs. One features Simon and one features some artwork by Dees Malone, which might already be out of uh, style if I if I decide to keep this, but we'll see what the new year brings. So there we go, guys. If you want some stickers, go ahead and do that. Let's jump back into the video, and I will see you guys again at the end for a few closing remarks. So the LK4 Pro 3D printer is a $350 3D printer with some interesting features. Mostly, it's the same as any other mid-range standard 3D printer. A build plate that's about ooh, 200 or 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters of build volume that's a little bit taller than that. But uh, overall, if you're just looking for, well, if you're just thinking about it as the print that you're getting out of it, this printer doesn't offer anything more or really less than you could get in a lot of different kits. And if all you're thinking is, well, the prints that come out of it, wh why do I care about all the fancy features and stuff like that? Then, yeah, you might think, let's go as cheap as possible. And as cheap as possible seems to be about $200. But that wasn't always the case. When I first started 3D printing, the cost of making a 3D printer, bare bones, absolutely base minimal 3D printer was $800. That was, that was the common knowledge, maybe $600 if you were lucky. And then along comes China and says, hold my baiju. And they go and beat us under the table with $200 3D printers. So apparently $200 is the minimum for a 3D printer. And that kind of makes sense. See, a 3D printer isn't really that complicated of a machine. It's got three stepper motors, rails to move them around, and it's all controlled by a microcontroller that those are getting cheaper every day. Now, what we're seeing here is uh, one of the ways that China saves cost on their 3D printers. They don't assemble them. You have to assemble them, which means that's your time, your effort, and what's your time worth to assemble a 3D printer? So, yeah, here we go. I'm going to have to spend my time building this 3D printer, uh, you know, more or less from the ground up as we work here. And so, yeah, there we go. $200 worth of parts, but is it a $200 3D printer? No, I, I could put this together and I might not end up with a 3D printer at all. Of course, I will because I'm going to follow their instructions. But that's the point. It's just a box of parts. And with a box of parts, they actually get to skip a lot of steps that uh, ooh, might be a little bit important, like quality checks, like uh, safety checks, like ensuring that the whole 3D printer, when it's put together, doesn't have anything in it that's going to burst into flames and burn your house down. Yes, assembling a 3D printer costs extra. And you know, human cost is one of the most expensive things. That's why for a fully assembled 3D printer, you can expect to spend a little bit more. Now, I have seen 
fully assembled 3D printers that are only about $200. But, you know, they're very small and you give up some of the size and capability of larger 3D printers when you go that route. But then it seems like the next level of 3D printers takes a huge jump. It goes from 200 for just parts to 350 for better parts to $400 for a pretty well-assembled 3D printer to $800. And what is that jump from $400 to $800? And I'm talking about the Prusa here. The, a Prusa i3 will run you about $800. And why is that one $800 when other 3D printers are $350? Well, Prusas are by reputation. I haven't ever used one, but I absolutely trust the people who have told me really solid, well-built machines. Machines that uh, out of the box, once you assemble them, and Prusa has actually gone through the trouble of making a machine that can calibrate itself out of the box, ready to go. It's, uh, it makes good prints. It makes accurate prints. I've had more than a few people who have tested my Lego bricks and said, oh yeah, on my Prusa, they print perfectly and they interlock with real Lego bricks. And that's, that is nothing to sneeze at. Prusa has put time and research and a lot of effort into using high quality parts, not just whatever parts in their 3D printers to ensure that it will print good and it will print accurately. And that results in a high jump in the cost, but it doesn't stop there. The price hike continues if you want a bigger 3D printer. And some people will point out, well, the CR10 is a bigger 3D printer and it's not that much more expensive when well, that's true. But CR10, you give up a lot of the high-end features that you might get in another 3D printer. Still, yes, so to have larger and high-end, it needs more rigidity, it needs better parts, it needs more parts. Again, you might have discovered this if you've already done 3D printing, but if you scale something up just a little bit, because we're going in three dimensions, it adds a lot more material to it. And the same is true for 3D printers, but it's more than just materials. It's research, it's development, it's getting it right for the users the first time. I think I'm just gonna cut this foam. And then there is the high-end machines. The Raise N2 Pluses or N2 Pros for $6,000. My goodness, is it really worth the cost. Well, I can tell you this. I've been using a Raise N2 Plus at the Makerspace, and I will say, while it doesn't have some of the high-end features that I would like, like filament runout detection, but that is available in the Pro, it does have, oh my goodness, a Wi-Fi interface, a touchscreen interface that's super slick and cool, a slicer that they have written themselves mostly, that is also very slick. Ah. Ooh, I hope that part's not important. And overall, it's just a super duper experience to work with. So the question though becomes, is it a $6,000 experience? Why this, why this slope? Why doesn't it go up gradually? Why couldn't we have a 3D printer that comes bare bones for $200, but if you want a filament runout sensor, we can get that in there and plug it in there. And if you want to have uh, auto leveling, we can get that in there and plug that in there and just have it be plug and go. Well, unfortunately, I'm afraid that a 3D printer like that would be a $4,000 3D printer that they then uh, basically just amateurize the cost of each element by making you pay for it over time. I don't know quite why it is that way, but that does seem to be what it is. And if you have any insights to that, then hey, comment sections down there and it still works. Let me know what you think. Oh, there we go. All right. 
Well, this doesn't look like it's going to be too bad to put all together. I will say I'm super excited by some of the features that I'm seeing go into the LK4 Pro here. I'm not super excited about a kit that I have to put together, but that's okay. I can manage it, and it doesn't look like it's too bad. A couple of uprights that I need to screw together, a couple of bolts. This will be together in no time. I'm not worried about that at all. But what I think is neat about this is that it has the full color touchscreen interface that I'm super excited for, and, and I hope that they have developed this extremely well. I'll let you guys know, this isn't a review by any means, it's just an unboxing. But it also has some other really neat features like, uh, well, it's got the ability to detect that the filament's running out, which we're starting to see become more and more standard at the lower and lower prices. And that also seems to be the trend. We see these new features show up and then the price for them drops over time. So does that mean that eventually we will have a fully featured, fully enclosed, fully touchscreen, fully Wi-Fi, fully accurate 3D printer for only $200? <laughs> Maybe. I, you know, I don't see the future, but I will say this. It has never been a better time to get into 3D printing, whatever your budget is. And in searching for the best price for the best 3D printer, you're always looking for those outliers, a 3D printer that delivers more than other printers of the same cost. Is the Longer Pro it? Nah, I'll tell you later when I do a proper review of it. I will say that I have run into a few printers that really deliver on that. Right, so there were a couple of things that I noticed during editing that I forgot to bring up. First of all, I, I did briefly mention that one of the biggest costs in making anything is the human cost. The cost of paying humans to do research and development and also the cost of paying humans to build a thing. And the less building that they can do, the more they can hand to the consumers, the less money that they have to pay. But there's also a huge cost in research and development. Now, if you did not already see Joel Telling's interview with Adrian Bowyer about the process of making the RepRap, the 3D printer that, quite frankly, almost every sub $500 3D printer is almost directly based on. You should really check it out. But he said something interesting in that interview. He said that the grant for doing that research was only $27,000. Now, $27,000 is both a lot and not a lot of money for a project like this. But he wanted to challenge himself to be able to do it at less than the cost that you would pay for a full-size 3D printer at the time, which at the time were tens of thousands of dollars at the minimum. He wanted to do it for less than that. But there were other costs in there. Dr. Bowyer himself was not paid. He was paid by the university, but that cost isn't calculated in there. The researchers and assistants that he had, the students who were working with him, they weren't paid. They were students. They were working for free. A lot of people donated a lot of their time and resources into producing those first 3D printers. And all of that is money that we don't have to recoup later. In other words, the cost of a 3D printer can be so low because of what was given to us more or less for free. And in that vein, the firmware that your 3D printer is probably running on is a version of Marlin. And Marlin is still in active development. So if you 3D printed something, you should probably support the Marlin development by supporting Scott on Patreon. I would even say that before you support me, you should probably support Scott on Patreon. Now, I mean, if you're already supporting Scott on Patreon, you can kick me a buck and I'll give you some really cool 3D models. But you should be supporting Scott and the continued development of Marlin because that's going to enable our 3D printers to get better. And he's giving Marlin away for free 
to the world. So we are all benefiting from it. We have already benefited from it. We're going to benefit more from it. So this partially plays into the whole cost. If they have to develop it on their own, they have to recoup those costs. But if they develop it based on open source designs that are already out there, they don't. And even some Chinese companies are adding on to those open source designs. And though that cost them money. Creality and the whole debacle around them adding to open source but not giving it back. And now they are. But, you know, they're they're being very generous in providing that for us at only a slightly increased cost. Other people are developing new things, new technologies related to 3D printing. And so that drives the cost up just a little bit. It's a complicated question with a lot of facets. And I want to hear your thoughts on it in the comments. Some of the thoughts that I've heard already when I brought this up to people is no 3D printer should ever cost more than $400, $500, maybe 600 tops. Do you agree with that? Or do you think that there's some benefit in companies developing closed source technology with the aim of making them more user friendly, of making them a, a device that's closer to an appliance than the open source machines are. Because if we're honest with ourselves, open source machines, they aren't super easy to use and making a 3D printer easier to use is a big part in them becoming more adopted and more appliance-like and more used in the world. I'd like to hear what you think. Comment section is open for you guys, and I look forward to hearing from you there. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there, and hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.